Okay, so DaVinci Resolve. Okay, I tried to say this sentence maybe like 10 times and didn't work. So I'm just gonna say it really slow because I didn't sleep yesterday. So this is how Blackmagic Design just released DaVinci Resolve 12.5. Yes. So uh, I didn't sleep yesterday, that's really, I think, clear. So hi, I'm Alex Jordan for LearnColorGrading.com and uh, today we're going to take a look at the new version of uh, Blackmagic uh, Design's uh, DaVinci Resolve. Of course, you know, we had version uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and now we have 12.5 for some reason. 12.5 for me is a very, very, very special uh, version of DaVinci Resolve because it's the first version that actually communicates to a compositing software. So in this case, Fusion. Remember the dynamic linking thing that was going, or still going actually, between uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects? I don't know how this one works because I've never used uh, Fusion before, but now you can actually send your sequences from DaVinci Resolve to Fusion for compositing and bring them back without having to render any footage, which is very impressive and very important now because that was one of the main things that were holding a lot of people from actually using uh, DaVinci Resolve. So now we're going to discuss the uh, most important new features. I mean, a lot of features were introduced. These are the features that interest me personally. So we're going to be taking a very simple look at some of the new features in DaVinci Resolve, 12.5. Uh, so one of the first additions here is something called the single point tracker. If you go to the tracker window here, now we have this section on the bottom where you can choose Cloud Tracker or Point Tracker. Now, DaVinci's tracker is simply, okay, if not the best in the industry, it's at least one of the absolute best in the industry. However, when you try to track a single point, like let's say you're, track, you're trying to track someone's eye or uh, you're trying to track uh, a car's light, for example. Now, that tracker is very good at resolving complex like 3D movement. However, if you're trying to track a single point, usually it used to be a challenge. So now we have a new type of tracker that is called the single point track. Let's take a look at how it works. Let's choose one of the footage we have, like this clip for example. Let's say I want to track this part here. So I'm just going to add a window. So I'm just going to add a new node. I have a new node here. And now I'm just going to click on windows here and I'm going to add a window. And let's simply bring the window here. If I come to the tracker, notice a very important thing. If I switch from cloud tracker to point tracker now and I start tracking, nothing happens. I get an error message because you have to actually tell Resolve which point do you want to track on the image. So on the bottom here, we have the add tracker point option. We click it and now we have this new point here that we can move anywhere in the screen. Now notice what is being tracked now is the point, not the window. So they don't even have to be on the same area. So now I have this point here. What's happening now is I'm tracking a single point. Let me start tracking forward and notice how they're both working together. Now the window is being locked to the tracking point. And I'm gonna come back to the beginning of the tracking, uh, where I started tracking here, and I'm gonna track backwards. Now notice, I can simply move the window anywhere here, and it will always be locked. The window will always be locked to the tracking point which is very important because sometimes you try to track these like small points and even though DaVinci's tracker is, is, is very good, still you usually face some challenges when you're trying to track a single point on your image. So now we have two types of trackers, the cloud tracker and the point tracker. And one of the small refinements I really like is the new way uh, you can display audio on top of your uh, video preview. So usually if I have uh, this video here, this is my source monitor, and I want to view the audio, I usually have to click on the drop down menu here, switch to audio track, and this is where I see the audio. And in order to see the video again, I have to uh, click again on the drop down menu, go back to source and see my video. We have a new option here. If you click on the three dots on the top right here, you have two new options. Show zoomed audio waveform and show full clip audio waveform. If I click on the show zoomed audio waveform, now we have a small representation of the audio waveform on top of the video. So if you play it, 
This is a very nice way of viewing your waveform. And you can also uh, click on the three dots again, go to show full clip audio waveform. And now you have the waveform displayed for the entire clip. And one of my most favorite new additions it's a very small addition but i really like it is the new uh, temperature uh, controls so if you come to primaries here and you click on two now you have a couple of new options so you have temperature and tent now let me reset everything okay now not to say that you couldn't do this before you can always um, adjust these uh, through the color wheels but this makes it extremely easy to change the temperature and the tint of your image so i'm just going to go to color boost first increase saturation a bit then i'm going to go to temperature and notice that i can simply change the temperature just by uh, adjusting one slider if you look to the right here notice what temperature does it tries to balance the red and blue channels without really affecting the green channel and tint will try to uh, balance the green channel without affecting the balance between the red and the blue channel so this is tint and this is temperature so this makes it extremely easy to change the temperature. Notice one thing, notice how these effects are laid. So for example, uh, let's go back to color, we set all grades and nodes, and now I'm simply going to go to temperature and take it all the way to the right so I have a very yellow image, beautiful. Now, let's go to color boost and reduce all the colors. We still have a yellow tint on top of the image. So now if I increase the color boost, now the colors are gonna be added on top of the yellow image that it received from temperature. So it's very important to remember that temperature affects your image after color boost. This is very important. Now also one of the new things is that Blackmagic Design just included a bunch of effects that comes with Resolve for free. So now, if you go to open effects here, you'll find all the new effects that were added by default to uh, DaVinci Resolve. Now, uh, these effects are like, there are two groups basically, or some of them you'll find the word GPU next to it. This means that this is a GPU accelerated effect. If you add this effect to your node, your system is going to be using the GPU to render this particular effect. And other effects have the effects sign here, not the GPU sign, which means that uh, your system will be using the CPU, not the GPU, which means which means it's a bit slower uh, to render these effects. So, for example, I'm just going to uh, grab dent here, and you can see what it does. Now, these are like standard effects that are usually included with a lot of other systems. And when you click on the node and you go to settings here, these are the settings for this effect. Let me just remove all the clips here. So we can go to library and choose something else like film grain, where we get a message. Now, this message is extremely important because some of these effects only work with DaVinci Resolve Studio. So this is the approach of Blackmagic Design. Instead of crippling their a free version of DaVinci Resolve, which is just DaVinci Resolve, they actually added a lot of features. So DaVinci Resolve on itself is just extremely powerful. However, they have some features that are reserved for the paid version, which is DaVinci Resolve Studio, like multi-GPU support and the uh, noise reduction features. Now they've also added some effects to that. So some of these effects will only work with the paid version. However, uh, I think the free version is more than enough, but remember, it's, it's kind of important, frankly, to support them with what they're doing. I mean, this is a company that took DaVinci Resolve from being like a very expensive, uh, like very elite uh, system and just give it to the rest of the world for free actually. And now they're doing the same with Fusion. Um, I think it's kind of important and DaVinci Resolve isn't that expensive anyway. So if you're a filmmaker that can afford uh, to buy the full version, you should always try to buy the full version, frankly, because mm, what they're doing is kind of important. Even though I own the full version, uh, on the channel here we only use the uh, free version because I just want this to be accessible to everybody. So anybody can just simply watch the channel and learn a lot of information about Resolve. And no, I am not sponsored by them at all. Hmm. Or am I? <laughs> no, no, I'm really not sponsored by them. I'm serious. Yeah, uh, so you have the effects here. You can just uh, try them and see how they work for you. And when it comes to delivery, uh, they added some presets. Now, if you go to deliver now, uh, remember, I'm just going to click on clips here to remove this and maybe drag this down a bit. Okay, so now on the left here, we have the export options. Now, these export options aren't usually the easiest to use for, for beginners. Uh, there's a, There are a lot of options that you have to choose from. So in order 
order to make this really simple and easy, they added uh, some presets here on top. So for example, I have a YouTube uh, preset and if I click this uh, icon here, I can choose like 1080p and now all the settings uh, for the export tab will be populated with, uh, with the settings for this particular preset for YouTube. For example, you have FCP XML and you have now a Premiere XML, which is interesting. Avid AF, uh, you can you have a lot of presets. So these presets are very powerful and very straightforward. That I doubt a lot of people will be tinkering with the uh, settings, uh, the export settings uh, anymore. And two other points: uh, if you joined any of the DaVinci Resolve simplified training uh, programs we have uh, over for any version, you will always get a free upgrade. So all of the current. Uh, filmmakers who are joining the programs will all, whether you joined uh, on, on Resolve 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, everybody will get a free upgrade to, uh, just as usual, to DaVinci Resolve 12.5 course. And one last thing, I know nothing about Fusion, frankly, I'm, I'm not a compositor, I've, I worked with After Effects for a while, and it, you know, I can do some things, but I'm not really uh, a compositor that I can work with After Effects. However, I'm looking for someone who can teach Fusion on Learn Color Grading, because I think it's very important for people who learn Resolve to learn some basics about Fusion, because it's, it's as important for Resolve now as After Effects is important for Premiere. So I know nothing about Fusion. I'm looking for someone who can actually teach Fusion uh, on on Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com with us. I have only one request with this thing, is that just like all of our courses, it should be as simple and as easy as possible. Not for compositors. Anyone who watched this course, who have no knowledge about compositing whatsoever, should be able to composite later, so when, when they finish the course. So the whole thing is that it should be as simple and as easy for the absolute beginner. The course will not only teach fusion, it will it should teach fusion and compositing at the same time for the absolute beginner. If you uh, can do this, or, or if you know someone who can join, please email me at alex at learncolorgrading.com. So maybe we can uh, create this course and maybe it will be helpful. So this was the review for uh, 12, for Resolve 12.5. I'm not sure why it wasn't Resolve 13 again, I'm not sure, which, which really makes me very excited because with all the updates, it was still 12.5, which really makes me wonder what's coming in 13.